you know, not very long. Mm. On your hands and knees. Right. And notice the configuration you've got where your hands are in relationship to your knees. Are your knees wider than your hands or your hands are wider than your knees? If you look sort of underneath you, is your head in the middle of your hands and your knees? Or is it a little bit off to one side? Just to notice. How much are you holding yourself up off the ground maybe? And how is it possible maybe you could settle something in your belly or your chest? Just a little bit more onto the ground, just softening into the ground a little bit. Could you now find a place and feel free to reorganize your knees and hands wherever you want, or you can put the top of your head on the floor? So obviously your elbows are going to bend, so it's the top. Actually, let's come back up to sit it kneeling. It's a big one in itself. Come back, kneel. Where's the top of your head? <laughs> Where do you think the top of your head is? Do you know where the top of, can, how specific can you be about where the top of your head is? Or is it sort of somewhere in this general area? Huh? So just notice, do you use a hand? Do you use a finger? Okay, could you place that part of your head on the floor? <laughs> And simply notice where it is in relationship to your hands and your feet. So we talked a little bit the other day about this. Is your head outside the support of your hands and your feet? Is it inside the support of your hands and the feet? So just try a few places, just experiment. This is the thing I would say we as Feldenkrais practitioners are least good at. <laughs> Exploring, where could I have my hands? Do I want them a little bit further away from my knees? Do I want them a little bit closer? Do I want my head closer to my knees or further away from my knees? Where's a point that... I feel I can breathe easily, that I don't feel my head's pushing really hard into the floor. So this is your point, no one else's, just yours, to find where you can most easily let your head rest. Feel free to have padding under it if you feel the, the floor is hard. And very gently, we did this a little bit with Ruth, begin to roll your head a little forward and backward from the top of your head. Just a little forward and a little bit backwards. And take as many rests as you like while you're exploring this. And gently scan through as you're doing this, as I'm taking my head a little forward and back, what do my fingers do? What do my wrists do? So as much as you can, if you can, you're in a, your elbows are off the floor, but if you need them on the floor, that's fine. What do my elbows do? How do they adapt? to this little rolling of my head forward and back? What do my shoulder joints do? What do my collarbones and my shoulder blades do? Are they all able to respond a little? Are they all alive? to this very small movement of rocking my head forward and back. 
So what do my shoulders do as my head rocks forward? Where would they move through space? Do I try and keep them in a fixed position? So how do I let them respond? Where do my shoulder blades go? Do they slide on my ribs a little bit? What directions do they move in? What's happening in the relationship of my chin and my sternum? That's something else we're, we've been looking at in different lessons. How does that, does that change at all? As I roll a little forward and back, and has that got anything to do with the freedom in my shoulders? And my shoulder girdles? And pause, just sit back for a minute. And just see what's that done? What's this putting the top of your head on the floor and just rolling it a little bit forward and backwards? Done to your sense of maybe how you support yourself in space. Okay, down you go again. And just notice, is my head, does my head go in the same position or does it go in a different position? Is something, or have I, as soon as I go down, I automatically put my head back where it always goes. <laughs> and begin this little gentle rock forward and back again. And feel what does your pelvis do? How does it respond to this little movement of your head forward and back? What do your hips do? Can you differentiate between what your pelvis does and what your hips do? What do your knees do? So now continue this gentle movement, just a little rock forward and back and change the orientation of your arms. Some have already done this. Could one be a little bit closer to your knees and one further away? You're still on the top of your head. And how does that asymmetry, we've done this a lot in a lot of different ATMs, what has to happen differently through your shoulders, through you, the base of your neck, to let you keep doing this very straight line on the top of your head? <laughs> You've just changed the orientation of your arms, Elizabeth. Ones, so they're just a little asymmetrical. One's closer to your knees and one's further away. So how does this force, still thinking of your knees and your pelvis and your hips, go through you and then you could change your hands the other way and really feel how this asymmetrical position might change which knee moves a little bit more or the angle that your pelvis moves on. But something about in this asymmetrical position, you can still stay within this very small straight line at the top of your head. So you might notice that your head goes off on a diagonal as you do it. So what could you allow to soften somewhere that means that your head can still stay in the middle or your skull? 
Have a rest again. <laughs> Sit back. And what's that done to the sense of the top of your head? By exploring it in slightly different configurations in your torso. Back again, and this time your legs asymmetrical. Arms symmetrical, legs asymmetrical. So again, as I said, we've done this in other ATMs over this segment, really exploring how this is going to send the shape through a little bit differently to the top of your head. How do your shoulders adapt? In, so your shoulders... In, how are they going to adapt? What, is one shoulder going to go a little bit up and down differently to the other one because of this asymmetrical movement of your pelvis and knees? How do you let these movements wind through you? And then your knees the other way. You're still trying to find this very, if you can, straight line at the top of your head. But even with all of these changes in your torso, you know where the top of your head is. How about if you make your arms asymmetrical too? And notice what you do. Do you have one hand and one knee on the same side closer? And one hand and one knee further away? Or do you have more a diagonal? And it doesn't really matter. All we're doing is changing our shape and finding do we still know where the top of your head is? <sighs> All of these different ideas, all these different orientations. So when we talk about changing orientations, it can be really small changes. And then come back to sitting. Where's the top of your head? Is it a little clearer? <laughs> And what does the top of your head give you? When you really know where the top of your head is in space. So keeping that sense of the top of your head, you can even put your finger on it, go, where is it? Huh? Come up to standing. Keeping the top of your head really clearly. Notice how most of you came up to standing. <laughs> what is it about knowing the top of the head that most of you chose not to do <laughs> a big role? <laughs> So go for a walk. What does knowing where the top of your head do to your organisation? And then sort of lose it in your image. What happens when it's not in your image, the top of your head? And then get it back again. So Feldenkrais talked... It, you mightn't have heard him, but he's saying, you know, over these next few weeks, we're really asking your head to get organised, <laughs> to find all these planes of movement. How would you turn if you had a top of your head really clearly in your image? 
Would you go over to one leg and do a big turnaround like my grandmother did? No. <laughs> so maybe there's something in all these deportment lessons about putting a book on the top of your head. <laughs> what it does to organise us. Knowing where the top of our head is in space. How light are your arms when you know where the top of your head is? <laughs> okay. You all look like you're in a bit better space now. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>